You're using Photoshop wrong. Fortunately, there's a simple solution, smart objects. And I don't mean sometimes, I mean all the time. All right, I want you to think of a smart object in Photoshop as a kind of invisible suit of armor that protects the image from harm. And so among other things, you can apply non-destructive transformations. That is, you can scale and rotate the image as many times as you like without harming a single pixel. And so here we are looking at a very detailed macro shot from the Dreamstime image library, link in the description. Notice in the layers panel, we have an image thumbnail, but we don't have any badge. And that means the pixels are just sitting there vulnerable to damage. And so let's say I switch to the move tool up here at the top of the toolbox. Now at first, you're just gonna see a bunch of dimmed alignment icons up here in the options bar. But if I start scaling this image like so, then I will see numerical values. And as long as you see those numerical values, you can do anything you want to the image. This part is non-destructive. Right, so I can make it small and then I can make it big again and it looks fine. However, as soon as I so much as hit the enter key, then those numerical options are gonna go away, at which point I have rewritten every single pixel inside this layer. And that also means that if I apply another transformation, and so I'll just undo that for a second so you can see up here in the options bar that the width and height values are 100%. Just a moment ago, they were something quite different. But Photoshop doesn't remember that because it doesn't remember those original pixels. It just remembers where it's starting from now. And so that means if I make this guy very small, 13% or what have you, then it's compounded upon the last transformation. If I press the enter key and those values disappear, I have once again rewritten all the pixels. And so now if I think, well, you know, I want to make this guy bigger, obviously something is very wrong. We have squished this image like the bug that it is. And so I'm going to make it much bigger, let's say, and then in order to rewrite these pixels for real, at this point we've just magnified the pixels, but if I really want to average the pixels and apply the interpolation, then I press the enter key and actually it's surprisingly good, isn't it? But it's not the original image. It's actually in very poor shape now, which is why what I'm gonna do at this point is go to the file menu and choose the revert command to start this process over. And as I was saying, it's I'm not recommending you use smart objects, you know, when you think it's a good idea. You want to use smart objects all the time in Photoshop. So I'll go up to the layer menu, choose smart objects, and choose convert to smart object. And that way we've placed the image inside of a smart object. So think of it this way. The smart object itself is a vector-based object. The image is pixels inside that vector-based object. So in other words, the pixels are safe, and now you can do anything that you would normally do to a vector. You can make it any size you want to. I'll squish it, squish it, squish it like that. It's just under my you know foot here and it is just in terrible, abominable shape. I'll zoom in and you can see that, well, there's not much left to it, is there? But if I were to zoom back out and once again, switch back to the move tool and make this guy bigger or just drag it around if, if I miss. But yeah, this is a great thing. I could make a mistake like so and then you know press the enter key to apply that change. It, it is still fine. It, it, it's just inside this container once again. And then I'll switch back. Well, I am actually switch back to the move tool. So now I could just drag outside the container to rotate it some more, but nothing I do can damage it. And I even have an additional option here inside the properties panel, which is just to reset everything to get rid of any transformation I've applied. And then I can just move it back into place. Now, another group of exciting options that's afforded to you by smart objects are smart filters, which aren't necessarily smart per se. They are just forever editable, thereby expanding your creative range. And so I'm gonna convert this image to a smart object by switching to one of the selection tools, doesn't matter which one, and then right clicking, at which point you have a unique sub menu that includes convert to smart object. And notice now we have a badge associated with a layer thumbnail, which once again indicates that we are working with an indestructible smart object inside Photoshop, at which point I'll go up to the filter menu and I'll choose this command smart sharpen. 
which allows me to sharpen the detail in an image. So we're increasing the edge contrast. I've gone ahead and applied a few settings right here, at which point I'll click OK, and we're seeing Smart Sharpen applied as an editable smart filter. And so I'll just go and zoom in for a second here so that we can see these eyelashes. Notice how crisply defined they are. And so this is before, if I turn the filter off, this is after. And you can apply more than one, by the way, by going to another totally different menu. By the way, if you go to the image menu and choose adjustments, all of these commands are also available as smart adjustments, including this command right here, Shadows Highlights, which is in fact a filter. So I'll just go ahead and choose it, and I'll increase the shadows value to 50%, thereby brightening the shadows. And I'll take the highlights down by 20% so that we have better defined information here, detail, I suppose, at which point I'll click OK. Now that does bring out a little bit too much in my opinion. This, by the way, is before and this is after. So if you want to tone things down, you have this little blending slider right there. Notice that. Double click on it. That'll bring up this dialog box, at which point you can change the blend mode. So I'll change it to luminosity. That will drop away the new color so that we're seeing the original colors right there. And then I'll take the opacity value down to 50% and click OK. And so that just mutes the effect a little bit. And I can change that again just by double clicking on the sliders. Those same values will come up. So they're thoroughly and infinitely editable. And now I'm going to apply a kind of effect by choosing filter gallery from the filter menu. And I've already specified one here in advance. It's reticulation, as you might see right there gives you this kind of effect right here. But it's purely black and white. It's really based on the foreground and background colors. And so if I want to reintroduce the colors, then I would click OK. Notice now we have a total of three different smart filters right here, editable filters. That, and I can change their order if I want to. I can actually drag them up and down a list. Doesn't make much of a difference in this case, but still. And I'll go ahead and double click on the sliders. And now I'm getting this alert that's telling me, well, one filter stacked on top of another. I don't care. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to change the blend mode this time to overlay to bring back the original colors and click OK. And now it might make a difference if I put the filter gallery back on top at the top of the stack, or it is pretty slight. And by the way, if I'm not really all that happy with the edge contrast associated with the eyelashes and so forth, I could double click on Smart Sharpen, get the alert message once again, just click OK. And I'll take the radius value up to 10 pixels so we have thicker edges, at which point I'll click OK to accept that effect and then they'll all get remixed together. And so just imagine if you didn't have the option of editing each and every one of these effects, how drab your life would be. Hey, real quick, what I'm showing you are just a few things you can do with smart objects. There's so much more. For example, a smart object lets you replicate one custom multi-step photographic process onto another. You can take this and switch it out for this. To see just how far smart objects can take you, join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. Now, there's a couple of filters in particular that you shouldn't even consider applying as static filters. You want to always apply them to smart filters, and those are Liquify and Camera Raw Filter. Now, Liquify is just the kind of thing that you have to massage to get, to get things exactly right. And this is such a big deal, by the way, that I'll be devoting a future week to this topic. So be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. You're going to love it. But in the meantime, we'll talk about Camera Raw Filter that brings up an environment that is so rich and diverse and capable that it's almost as amazing as the rest of Photoshop put together. And so consider this image right here. Again, dreams time. What I want to do is get rid of the gondola as well as increase the contrast and some other stuff. But I, I really want to get rid of this guy and his ore. And I could use, for example, the very powerful remove tool. The problem is it's not really a generative feature and it's gonna give you one result. And if you don't like it, you have to undo and apply the brush stroke all over again. Whereas if I were to switch back to my rectangular marquee tool just by pressing the M key and right click and choose convert to smart object, then I could go up to the filter menu and choose camera raw filter 
which apply which allows me to apply generative remove and so i'm going to start just by tweaking the contrast so i'll take it up to not quite that high i'll just take it up to 30 and by the way if at this point you were like yeah i like it i'll click ok you will apply camera raw the big huge thing that is camera raw as an editable smart filter which means you can just double click on it in order to bring it back and I could modify that contrast value, of course, or I could twirl open effects and I could crank up the clarity value right here to increase the low frequency edge data so that we have some very sharply defined sort of, you know, sculptural material going on here. And now what I want to do is I want to get rid of the gondola, as I say, and so I'll switch to the remove tool right there and notice we now have generative AI as well as object aware at first I don't need it I'm going to turn off object aware generative AI though is great because it will give us three different variations and so if I decide I don't want this pole right there I just brush over it now at first it's not going to do anything it'll just show you what you've done that way you can apply more brush strokes if you want but I'm going to click apply in order to have Camera Raw do its thing. It's consulting, by the way, with Firefly online. So you do need a live internet connection. And then notice I'll turn off show overlay, which is off by default, actually. And then I'll switch between my variations and see how you can decide which one you like the best. In my case, I think I like variation two. Looks good. And now what I'm gonna do is turn on object aware. And that way, Camera Raw is going to identify the object around which I brush. So I'll just kind of brush around this guy and hope for the best. It may be that Camera Raw fills things in automatically, or I might have to give it a little bit of additional help. But I'll just release and see what happens. And sure enough, it identifies the gondola, the boat, quite nicely. I want to grab its shadow right here as well. And so by default, you'll switch to the refine mode right there, and then you can add to your brush stroke like so. And now that I've brushed in that ore, I'll click apply. And again, Photoshop, I want to make this clear, Camera Raw, in this case, is consulting with Firefly, which is a web app, so you need a live internet connection. And now we have different variations, so one, two, and three. And once you've decided which one you like best, let's say, you know, I'm going to watch this boat over here and see which one I like. I think this guy, this guy is the best remaining boat over there. After which point I'll click OK. And that is a feature that's uniquely available to Camera Raw that is not otherwise available to Photoshop. Have thoughts? By all means, comment. Not to mention like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And for a real deep dive into smart objects, I'm willing to bet you've never tried this. Join me at Patreon com slash deke now and then go to deke.com and sign up for my newsletter i'm deke mcclellan this is deke now